السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وصلى الله على النبي الأمي As I was preparing to do today's درس I was delaying it a bit and I was initially supposed to do from the masjid but I wasn't able to do that so I thought I should at least do it from home so as I was preparing, I delayed a little bit. I was watching some scientific discovery video where they were speaking about a certain state in the US and how there's these moving rocks. They call it the sailing stones. And this happens in a desert. <coughs> and for many, many years, it was unknown to them why that was happening. And uh, these big boulders, they were quite heavy, so there was no reason for them to be moving. And in 1915, somebody had written this incident down that these boulders are moving and leaving tracks in the soil there. But the reason is unknown. So for many years, it was just a mystery. And finally, in 2014, uh, two uh, people, they discovered what the reason was. <coughs> so... What happened was they discovered that just at the right settings, when it has rained in this death valley, which is a desert, but in the odd, in the very odd situation where it rains, and uh, it's a cold night, then the ground in this desert freezes with a thin sheet of ice, and when the winds come, they're able to move these rocks. What's so fascinating, fascinating there is that there's so much like deep mysteries in there that a rock is not supposed to move. A desert is not supposed to get rain and is not supposed to freeze overnight. When you put all these amazing things together, you have this miracle of moving these big rocks and boulders. I was trying to connect that to Ramadan as humans, sometimes our hearts become like rocks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, ثُمَّ uh, Then their hearts become hardened. And they become like rocks or harder than rocks. But then beautifully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the hearts, even after being hard, they're able to accept the truth and benefit and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions sometimes the odd thing is that some of these boulders that are up in the mountains they can even shatter and the water fountains uh, the water the natural fountains of water from there they erupt so sometimes you have these rocks that have no life to them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows that once the rock splits there's life giving water right, be, right after it so as we sometimes become stagnant in our lives and we become addicted to our certain rhythm of life, being attached to a certain things, some of them being detrimental, others just being useless, whether they be sins or just bad habits, then we kind of get too attached to the world. And I'm thinking to myself just a few days ago, like how is a person supposed to change when our temperament becomes so stagnant? So we look at the beauty of Ramadan, that is the time where all these phenomena sort of happen. During the day, just like how in a desert, we are not eating and drinking. So it's, leaving, it's leading us to become very dry. But then at night, Taraweeh happens. And that is like the rain in a desert. When these two things happen, that's when the big change happens. And... Uh, these two th uh, parts of Ramadan have been mentioned many, many times. Uh, in Arabic words for them being Siyam and Qiyam. And there's very specific hadith that mention the virtues of Siyam. Whoever fasts in the right, uh, in the right way, expecting a reward, Allah will forgive all their sins. And likewise, a person who stands at night and uh, prays the Taraweeh. And then likewise, with the right method, and with the expectation of rewards, Allah SWT will forgive all their sins. So Siyam and Qiyam, they go hand in hand. One purifies 
and the other beautifies. I repeat, one purifies and the other beautifies. So, so we have a very beautiful, deep religion that Allah SWT has given us. So let's use this beautiful month to change and uh, <coughs> to encourage <coughs> us Muslims to go further in the way of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, uh, that you have been uh, you have become so attached to this world. Aradhitum, have you just become content with this world? Do you not want to move on to further heights? So it seems as sometimes the human soul or the human uh, body and the ego and the and the self it attaches to the world too much. But the spiritual uh, flow, Allah SWT wants us to flow and become greater and greater. So let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us into our spiritual flows. And the second thing and the last thing I wanted to speak about is how do we become more productive in Ramadan? And how we can avoid procrastination. So I was trying to, I was fighting my own demons the last few days and I was asking myself, how do I become more focused? How do I make sure I don't waste this Ramadan? So a certain thought came into my head, which was that it's a very short Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as ayyaman ma'adudat, numbered days. So when there are numbered days, let's realize that before the month comes, that it will come, we'll all be shocked by the first few days, oh my God, we're fasting. Then by the time we stabilize, we become used to the flow, it's been a week already. And then we feel like, oh, I have a long way to go until the last few days. Later Qadr happens, I will straighten out those days, in those days. So in that way, a lot of the month passes by and we're never able to make up uh, our spiritual minds on what we want to do. And likewise, we don't end up reading much Quran and we don't, uh, eventually we don't end up being in a spiritual flow. So when we take this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayyama ma'adudat, these are numbered days. Just like how the month before Ramadan passes by and we don't even realize how fast it passes by. Like look at Shaban, it came and it's gone. So likewise Ramadan will come and go. The main thing is we need to take from it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for me and all of us uh, to benefit from this beautiful month of Ramadan. May Allah forgive all of our sins going into Ramadan. And may Allah uh, make it such that we uh, live a month of Ramadan in a state as if we are friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let it be such afterwards also. May Allah save us from the evil of our souls and may Allah keep us in His grace. Subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salamun ala al-mustaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa